Good morning, brothers and sisters in Christ. Let us rise for the prayer to the Holy Spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, fill the hearts of your faithful and kindle in them the fire of your love. Send forth your spirit and they shall be created and you will renew the face of the earth. Lord, by the light of the Holy Spirit, you did instruct the hearts of the faithful grants that by the same Spirit we may be truly wise and ever rejoice in His consolation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Good morning, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. Welcome to today's Eucharistic celebration. The readings of today highlight a call to repentance and encourages us to grow in holiness. For our Lord promises us peace and salvation. Let us embrace this call to purity as we prepare ourselves to celebrate the coming of Christ with hearts renewed and lives transformed by His grace. the second Sunday of Advent and we will light the candle of peace. Last Sunday, we lit the first candle in our Advent wreath. This first, Sunday, sun, this, sorry, this first candle reminded us of our hope in Christ. Today, we light the second candle of Advent, the candle of peace. We remember the prophets who spoke of the coming of Christ, of how a saviour would be born a king in the line of King David. The prophet Isaiah called Christ the Prince of Peace. They told us how he would rule the world wisely and bless all the nations. When Jesus came, he taught people the importance of being peacemakers. He said that those who make peace shall be called the children of God. When Christ comes to us, he brings us peace and he will bring everlasting peace when he comes again. We light the candle of peace to remind us that Jesus is the Prince of Peace and that through him, peace is found.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. And as we prepare ourselves to celebrate the Eucharist, let us call to mind our failures and ask the Lord for pardon and for peace. Lord Jesus, you have revealed yourself as the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You poured out on your people the spirit of truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are the good shepherd leading us to eternal life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son. But may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to, your, to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Console my people, console them, says your God. Speak to the heart of Jerusalem and call to her that her time of service is ended, that her sin is atoned for, that she has received from the hand of the Lord double punishment for all her crimes. A voice cries, Prepare in the wilderness a way for the Lord. Make a straight highway for our God across the desert. Let every valley be filled in, every mountain and hill be laid low. Let every cliff become a plain and the ridges a valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed and all mankind shall see it. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up on a high mountain, joyful messenger to Zion. Shout with a loud voice, joyful messenger to Jerusalem. Shout without fear. Say to the towns of Judah, here is your God. Here is the Lord coming with power his arm subsiding all things in him. The price of his victory is with him. His trophies all go before him. He is like a shepherd feeding his flock, gathering lambs in his arms, holding them against his breast, and leading to their rest the mother use. The word of the Lord.
a reading from the second letter of St. Peter. There is one thing, my friends, that you must never forget, that with the Lord, a day can mean a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day. The Lord is not being slow to carry out his promises, as anybody else might be called slow, but he is being patient with you all, wanting nobody to be lost and everybody to be brought to change his ways. The day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then with a roar, the sky will vanish, the elements will catch fire and fall apart. The earth and all that it contains will be burnt up. Since everything is coming to an end like this, you should be living holy and saintly lives while you wait and long for the day of God to come, when the sky will dissolve in flames and the elements melt in the heat. What we are waiting for is what he promised, the new heavens and new earth, the place where righteousness will be at home. So then, my friends, while you are waiting, do your best to live lives without spot or stain so that he will find you at peace. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The beginning of the good news about Jesus Christ, the Son of God. It is written in the book of the prophet Isaiah. Look, I am going to send my messenger before you. He will prepare your way. A voice cries in the wilderness. Prepare way for the Lord, make his path straight. And so it was that John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. All Judea and all the people of Jerusalem made their way to him. And as they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, they confessed their sins. John wore a garment of camel skin, and he lived on locusts and wild honey. In the course of his preaching, he said, Someone is following me, someone who is more powerful than I am, and I am not fit to kneel down and undo the strap of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ.
My dear brothers and sisters, as we gather today in anticipation of the joyous celebration of Christmas, let us take a moment to reflect and refocus our hearts on the true essence of the season. Now, I don't want to sound like a wet blanket or a mood killer, but in the midst, in the midst of the festive decorations, carols, singing, and joyful gatherings, and also this rush to get all the presents ready, it is essential that we remind ourselves of the only reason behind our Christmas celebration. And that is the profound reality that God became man. That's it. That's all that's important. Now in the Gospel of Mark, we are reminded of the pivotal role played by John the Baptist who directed our attention unequivocally to Jesus Christ. That's, he pointed to him. Mark defines his gospel as the proclamation of Jesus Christ, the crucified and risen Lord. Now the two Christological themes, Christ, which means the Messiah, and Son of Man, is the essence of the good news. It is not just a story. It is the living presence of the saving power of Jesus Christ. John the Baptist, who had initially called for repentance, as we know, now proclaims the coming of greater than he, of the greater than he, Jesus Christ, who will baptize with the Holy Spirit. And that's the message of the gospel today. In a departure from the synoptic gospels which give a summary of the ethical preachings of John the Baptist, Mark, in his gospel, focuses on John as the pointer to the coming one. That's his main focus. Baptism now is with the Holy Spirit. Baptism in or with the Holy Spirit is not a judgment anymore, but a promise an outpouring of the Spirit for the time of salvation. In the parallel texts of Matthew and of Luke, this baptism is described as being with the Holy Spirit and with fire. That is the baptism of judgment. It is likely that John the Baptist spoke only of the baptism with fire. But here in Mark, a threat of the impending judgment has been transformed into a prophecy of the outpouring of the Spirit, which is the work of the risen Lord. In the Gospel of Mark, neither John nor Jesus preached judgment. Neither of them preached judgment. This realization beckons us to shift our mindset from one that's fixated on judgment to one that's embracing grace and the life of the Holy Spirit. Let's consider that. It's a very serious thing to consider. That shift in our lives, if we have not made it, is vital. Approaching Christmas, let us wholeheartedly embrace the life in the Spirit that the risen Lord extends to us. Rather than dwelling on judgment, let us free ourselves from this preoccupation and in turn claim our place in the space of the tent of our Lord, simultaneously welcoming others as well, unconditionally into the space of this tent. Perhaps with this understanding and this disposition, we may be ready to prepare what we've heard in the readings, the way of the Lord, and route, also in the second reading, to the day of the Lord. The way of the Lord that leads to the day of the Lord, words that we've heard in the readings today. A term, the day of the Lord is a term which the authors of the Christian scriptures carried from the Hebrew scriptures. The author of the second letter of Peter, 
describes it this way, as we have heard. What we are waiting for is what he promised, the new heavens and new earth, the place where righteousness will be at home. It is the day of God's salvation. And when the psalmist also says today, mercy and faithfulness have met, justice and peace have embraced, faithfulness shall spring from the earth and justice look down from heaven. We await the day of the Lord. But, but it is an active waiting. This active waiting constitutes preparing the way of the Lord. John the Baptist echoes the prophet Isaiah's message. In the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. And we hear from the first reading, make straight highway for our God across the desert. In Isaiah, we also hear the prophetic voice announcing comfort and the coming of the Lord. This aligns perfectly with the theme of preparing the way of the Lord. The comforting promise of God's presence, the call to prepare a way in the wilderness, the assurance of the Lord's tender care for his people resonate with the essence of Christmas season. My dear brothers and sisters, we stand as it were. I would think we stand as it were in a desert, an empty wasteland, perhaps of broken lives and rejected people. Now the challenge of Advent is to clear a straight path. And like in the words of the opening prayer this morning, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your son. Or in other words, we pray to remove the things that hinder us from receiving Christ with joy. And that's basically making the part straight. And what would that entail? What would that entail? Personally, personally, you now when I reflect on it, I think for me it is to dispense with the fear of judgment. To dispense, to omit this. And not to be preoccupied with cause and effect. If I do this, the Lord will punish me, etc., etc. And Having said that, do not allow others to instill fear in us, to manipulate us, or even control us by invoking this concept of divine judgment. Be aware of it. Sometimes I wonder if to these people, God only talks to them about others and God doesn't talk to them about themselves. And instead, and instead, let us embrace grace and goodness and God's unconditional love. Let's embrace that. That's the way of the Lord. And for us as church and community to remove, to remove injustices around us, to remove discrimination, to remove prejudices, to remove everything that we will not, we will protect people rather than to hurt them with, their, with our actions, with our inactions, or even by our slanderous words. That we protect each other, not only here, but everywhere. We protect humanity around us everywhere. The way of the Lord is when we are peacemakers. Peacemakers that we are kind and compassionate, especially to strangers. The promise of Advent is that the Lord will come to save all nations. And we are part of it. Just to quote the U.S. Bishop's uh, document on health care and uh, health and health care, and I think it fits into our theme today, Be they wrote, because we believe in the dignity of the person, we must embrace every chance to help and to liberate, to heal the wounded world as Jesus taught us. Our hands must be the, must be the strong but gentle hands of Christ, 
reaching out in mercy and justice, touching individual persons, but also touching the social conditions that hinder the wholeness, which is God's desire for humanity. Christmas is not just about the birth of a baby in Bethlehem. It's about God becoming man. It's about Emmanuel, God with us, present in every, every moment of our lives. The season of Advent serves as a profound reminder of God's entrance into our world, culminating in the celebration of the birth of Jesus Christ. And finally, as we journey through this Advent season, and as we prepare to receive the Eucharist, let us prepare our hearts to receive the Lord. Let us create a space in our lives for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, we who are baptized, embracing the grace and love that Jesus brings. May our focus be unwavering, centered on the true reason for our celebration, the profound reality of God becoming man. Amen. Could we stand to profess our faith? I believe in one God. Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, to him all things were made, for us men and for us salvation. He came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we prepare for the coming of the Lord with hope and anticipation, we ask for peace and love to grow in our hearts as we bring before Him all our needs. For the universal church that united with Jesus Christ, the Prince of Peace, we may see the world through his eyes without dividing lines, embracing a shared humanity with love and mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our Pope's intentions, that God's love and mercy move us to enlarge the tents of our hearts and minds, to see beyond our own selfish desires. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in political office, that they may look into the needs of those on the fringes of society, ensuring that they receive the assistance they need to live a life of dignity. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in the world, we remember that salvation comes from God through Jesus, 
And we pray that his peace, protection, and healing be upon all who are afflicted by war and unrest. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the differently abled, that they grow in courage and their caregivers grow in compassion, and that society will be able to recognize their gifts and talents as they share their five loves and two fish in their own way. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For ourselves in the season of Advent, that we prepare steadfastly for the coming of Jesus, so that we live out our calling as joyful messengers, sharing Christ's love and mercy with all God's creation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In silence, let us lift our personal intentions to God. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Together, we stand before you, Holy Spirit, as we gather together in your name, with you alone to guide us. Make yourself at home in our hearts. Teach us the way we must go and how we are to pursue it. We are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote disorder. Do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path, nor partiality influence our actions. Let us find in you our unity, so that we may journey together to eternal life, and not stray from the way of truth and what is right. All this we ask of you, who are at work in every place and time, in the communion of the Father and the Son, forever and ever. Amen.
Pray, dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings, and since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with the protection of your mercy. True Christ, our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfill the design you formed long ago and open for us the way to eternal salvation. That when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis our Pope and Sebastian our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co as to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. The God who became man taught us this prayer. And with confidence, we pray to our Father in the words Jesus Christ gave us. Our Father. Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
This is Emmanuel, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to prepare the way of the Lord. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
So we have the second collection today. I'm here because it's an uh, appeal. It's called Kase Fundraising Initiative. This is an initiative by the Conference of Bishops Malaysia for three different Episcopal uh, commissions under the Bishops' Conference. That is the, the Commission for Creation Justice, Commission for the Pastoral Care for Migrants and Itinerants, the Pastoral Care, or rather the Commission for Caritas Malaysia. Now, these funds uh, focus on many different things, and they are to be utilized effectively in the key areas of direct aid and grants, awareness and education, advocacy, training, programs, projects and operations. They cover the, the, to promote the sanctity and dignity of every person, to foster peace and justice, to empower the marginalized, to, for environmental stewardship, disaster response, and to support migrants and refugees. This is done on the national level Every church in the country is taking this one collection, the second collection, and it will go to the Bishop's Conference, who will then uh, allocate it to these different national bodies to utilize for these purposes. So I ask you today to, it stands as a beacon of hope, compassion, and transformation. Together, let us create a peaceful and sustainable world, and we urge you to join us in generously donating to Kase. Thank you very much. Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in the, this mystery, 
You may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. I forgot to mention that those of you who want to transfer funds, there's a QR code that you can scan. Uh, there's a banner outside the chapel. You could, if you want, you could do that. Now, I want to talk to you about a man in this parish, a wise man who is the father figure of this parish. He also makes sure he keeps the parish priest and me on the straight and narrow path. Okay? He is very generous and he doesn't count the cost. He's a model that we all look up to. He's always there for us. He always tells me, Fabian, you can take a break anytime. I will cover for you. And he has done that very faithfully. But he's been here. He's like a legend in this parish. And um, I don't think I need to go on and on because I will not be able to stop. And I want you to join me in congratulating him. Today is his 57th anniversary of his ordination. Father Francis Anthony, Father F.A. My prayer is that I will be like that. <laughs> I still have a long way to go for 57. Okay. So anyway, th thank you, Father, on behalf of all of us. It's wonderful having you here. Thank you for all that you're doing and for just being here with us. So we have a prayer for you today. Let us pray together. Can we all stand and pray for Father F.A.? Together, Heavenly Father. On this special day, we lift up our dear Father F.A. to you. We thank you for his faithful service and the countless ways he has ministered to our spiritual needs. As we celebrate his anniversary, we pray for your strength and guidance to be with him. We make this prayer to Christ our Lord. Amen. God bless you, Father. Please be seated for more announcements. The first announcement, Exposition of the Blessed Sacrament from the 11th to 15th December will continue with the Exposition of the Blessed Sacrament with Benediction at the chapel from 7.15 p.m. to 9.15 p.m. On 12th December, there will be penitential service at the Cathedral of the Holy Spirit from 10.30 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. in Mandarin and English to cater specially for the senior citizens and from 8 p.m. onwards for all, also in Mandarin and English. Next Sunday, Bam Bambinelli Sunday, on the 16th and 17th of December, Please bring your baby Jesus to be blessed. CHS 2024 calendar and prayer book from me to you is ready. The prayer book consists of prayers contributed by you. This is a Christmas gift from the parish to each family. Thank you very much to the prayer book committee for taking up this project spending a lot of time and effort for all of us. A big thank you to all who have submitted your personal prayers so others can benefit from them. The calendar and Christmas gift can be collected from your zone leaders after the 16th of December. One copy each for each family. Please contact your zone leaders to get your copies. And finally, Rejoice, an Advent pilgrimage into the heart of Scripture by Father Mark Toops will continue after this Mass at the Blessed Sacrament Chapel. Thank you. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless us, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Have a lovely week ahead.
to 